Hi guys, welcome to the next video. Um, it's been a while since I did make a video. I've actually, um, I've really not even had any time to get a video made. Um, and truthfully, I wasn't going to come on and make this video. But I really feel the urging of the Lord. And so there's some things that um, that he has given me in dreams that I need to go ahead and share. And um, and I know that he wants me to do it because he's given me two confirmations for it. So, um, so let's just kind of double back and talk a little bit about where we were in the last video. The last video we were talking, uh, I think it was, I think it's entitled 10 to 1. And we were talking about, um, we were talking about deacons, which are the minor constellations and, um, and the importance of what those stars are trying to tell us in regards to magnifying and amplifying um, the major constellation message. And, um, and so we went through and there was a lot of information um, that I was able to find. And I also asked if you guys would go through the playlist and, um, and look at some of those videos because um, there was just a ton of information in there. Um, I have not been able to finish those videos as of yet. Um, I've just not had the time to get it done. Um, but I intend to continue going on to that. However, the Lord has given me, um, he has given me um, a dream that, and that dream was back on May the 31st, um, that I really wasn't sure what I was supposed to do with it. Um, when you have a dream from the Lord, you know it's from the Lord. You know there's something different about it. You know there's something unique about it. And in this particular dream, um, I, I didn't feel like I was there per se. You know, in some of the videos I had mentioned that, you know, um, I don't think it was a dream. I felt like I was there. You know, I was there. And, um, and so, um, but that, I didn't feel that way in this particular dream. It was a dream. And, um, and when I woke, when I awoke and thought about the dream, I thought, well, I, I don't know what the Lord is trying to tell me here. And so, um, and so let me just read to you what I had written down in my journal in regards to the dream and tell you what some of my thoughts were. And, um, and then we can talk about it a little bit further from that point. So on May the 31st, um, 2017, I awoke from a dream and, um, in the dream, I saw my daughter and I was looking at her. Um, I, there weren't any words spoken. There weren't any emotions felt or anything. It was just, I was there and I was looking at her, but I realized she was not in the same time that I was. Now, it was like we were on two different lines of time. Now, don't ask me how I knew that in the dream. I'm looking at my daughter, who's 27 years old. I'm looking at her, and I knew I was not in the same time as her. Now, we were in the same area because I was looking right at her. So I was in the same space, but I was not in the same time as her um and and i don't know i don't know no, i i didn't hear any words i just knew i was not in the same time as her and so my questions when i was writing it down into my journal was was it a different dimension was it a different a different plane what was it because, you know, I, I'm not sure I know all of the definitions about dimensions and, you know, l levels of, of realities um, or any of that. I, I, I don't know any of that, which is why I wasn't really sure what the Lord was trying to tell me. And so um, and so I said, is it a different dimension? And then I said, I'm not sure, but it was the same area, the same space. And so, um, so here's my questions. Was I ahead of her in time? Um, was I able to go ahead somehow? Was I, did I stay still and she move ahead? Did I go back? 
in time what how what what was going on because I knew um, that I was not in the same time as her and so um, and so I thought in the dream I had this thought come to me how do I communicate with her and the, it, it was like I had a response in my mind and it was I understood that we could write messages like notes we could leave notes we could write notes and um, notes of you know a message of some kind and um, now I'm not sure in the dream that's really all I remember I remember seeing her I remember we didn't communicate there was not not a lot of emotion there was you know I it was a matter-of-fact thing I, it was like I was looking at her and I just happened to know that we were not in the same time and so in my mind I'm like well you know how do I communicate with her and um, and so now I understand okay well I can write a note I can leave a message I can write a note and so I thought but there was something up there was some other understanding that I understood in this dream and it wasn't like I heard a voice or someone was talking to me or or anything like that it was like it was just an understanding and um, but the word book came to mind and I'm like, book, are we, you know, and so when I woke up, I'm like, you know, are we going to, are we going to leave them a book? You know, I am, am I, am I to write in a book? Is there um, some, some place, you know, I, I, I didn't know. I, I just wasn't, I wasn't understanding exactly what the Lord was trying to show me. And so, um, and so since I've been extremely busy and um, I didn't, I, you know, I, I, I asked the Lord about it. And I didn't, I didn't really want to move forward with the dream because I didn't really understand what it was. But I saw her. We were in the same space, but we were not on the same time. And 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 when I say time, I don't mean like I'm at three o'clock and she's at four o'clock. I mean like future, past, and present. I mean like time. Like I knew we were not on the same time. And so, um, and so I didn't know what that was. So I came to my journal and I wrote it down and I said, well, that was a very strange dream. I even, I told my husband about this and I had, I had a dream about, you know, let me tell you what this is. I don't understand what this means. And he didn't understand it either. And so, um, and so, um, on June the 3rd, I had another dream. Now, um, I have notes in here from in between, but I don't think it has anything to do with with the dreams so now on June the 3rd I had another dream and um, and this is what I have on this one last night in a dream a lady had a book in her hands and she was turning it over to show me the title and I could see her she was on my right side and she had this book it was it was similar to like um, about a book like this and she had it to where she turned it over like this to where I could see I could see the title of the book okay and so um, now the book that I saw you guys remember those older books you know you remember how they used to bind those books with some type of uh, like a cloth cover you know it was a hardcover book but had some type of um, like a cloth cover the older books and there wasn't pictures on them or anything it was just mainly just the title of the book and maybe who wrote the book um, but that's what that looked like it was an older type book and she had turned it over so that I could see the title and the title was a lot was a little bit longer than what the two words that I can remember but the two words that I can remember are time travel or time traveling okay um, so I don't remember the whole title, just the two words that I was allowed to remember. And then that dream was over. So, so I woke up on the third, the morning of the third, and I thought, what in the world? What in the world? Because now, you know, the, the first dream about my daughter, when, you know, I understood I was not on the same time as her. Um, and now this one where the woman turned the book over and the only two words in the title that I could re recall is time travel or time traveling. 
And so now I'm like, <laughs> what in the world is this all about? Because, you know, I don't know anything about this kind of stuff. And so, um, and so while I was laying in bed, I mean, I had, I had just awoke and I was laying in bed. I was reminded of that movie. You guys remember that movie about the mailbox? And it taught, it was about a lake house and it had Keanu Reeves in it and it had, um, uh, Sandra Bullock in it. And, um, and he was on a different time. He was in a different time, but she was able to communicate with him. I how by leaving an, a letter in the mailbox. And so the information came back to me from what the Lord had said in a dream. Well, I say what the Lord has said. I don't know how I got that information, but in that dream, I could leave a message. I could leave a note of some, of some sort. And so I didn't think about this, this movie. I hadn't seen this movie in years and I didn't even think about this movie when I woke up from the dream on May the 31st. I thought about it when I woke up this morning and I thought, well, that's so strange. And here's what my thought process was. And I wrote it down because it was, you know, it was kind of strange. And I thought, well, I'm just going to write it all down because it may mean something at some point. So as I woke, I was reminded of that movie about the mailbox and the lake house with Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock. You know they get paired together a lot in movies. And so I was thinking about that because I thought, yeah, they do get paired a lot in movies. Remember they were in the speed movies with the bus and all of that way back when? And so, um, and they do. And so then my mind went to Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks who also get paired a lot in movies. And the movie that popped up in my mind was You Got Mail. You guys remember that? You Got Mail. And it was those two paired up. And I thought to myself, now interesting that my, my thought process was going to the pairs and it was going to communication um, between time and it was um, going to communication again with pairs about You Got Mail. And so I thought, well, you know, this is this is really interesting. Um, so I just said it was interesting that the Lord would remind me about these upon waking. I mean, you know, I mean, I didn't come up with any of these and I hadn't seen any of these movies in a while. And so. Um, so while I was still laying there, I also thought about time since the Lord had said in that message back on May the 25th about time being relevant. And then we know that a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. And I also remembered um, an old um, message that the Lord gave me back in July 3rd, 2015. And it was, um, it was the, and I've shared this message before. It was about the fire, uh, the fiery rain from heaven. And it was, um, it was, it started out, do you trust me? You know, and I said, yes, Lord, I trust you with everything. And he, he filled me with complete peace. And then he gave me this message about the fiery, the wind was going to blow first. It was going to be a winnowing wind and then the fire from heaven. And so, um, but in that message, he also said that we would be gone, but it would, would it would be like mere moments for those here. It would seem like mere moments that we would be gone for those that remained here while we were gone. And so um, and so that message came to mind, too. So I'm laying there in bed. I, I've got the, the dream about the book, the title about time travel. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Now, this is linking into, you know, the last thing. And then and then, um, you know, and then the Lord is reminding me about pairs about the, the pairs and about the messaging and the mailbox at the lake house. And then you got mail with the other set of pairs. And so I'm like, you know, what, what is this, what does this all have to do with it? And so, you know, um, I started questioning is the 10 to one in relation to time. You know, I, I kind of questioned this on the first, the first time when I was questioning it is the time passage here versus there. I mean, is it like, the time here, how it passes here versus how it passes maybe in the eternities. Is that, is that what he's talking about? And, and, and where is there, you know, is that the island? 
you know, I can recall flipping through uh, some information when I was trying to understand the deacons and doing some research on that, that the, you know, that there are ratios of things. And then when I was going back in through the Bible to look about, you know, time and what kind of information that they had about time, you know, pi was popping up and all different kinds of things. And so, you know, I'm like, you know, does does twin signs have anything to do with it? You know, because the Lord has been talking about dual. He's been talking about two. He's been talking about twins. He's now um, now he gave me the information where it's the pairs. And so is that what he's trying to lead us to? You know, I you know, I don't know. Is this you know, what are what are we to understand in regards to this? You know, I, I just I didn't know. And, um, you know, is, is this the catching away? Is that what he's trying to tell us? Um, is it time travel? Is that the catching away? You know, is that what he's trying to tell us? You know, I didn't, I didn't know. I, I just didn't know. So I went to scripture. Now, um, I wasn't going to share this information because I don't know about this information yet. I'm still trying to dig into it myself. Um, you know, what What am I going to tell you? I'm going to tell you that I had a couple of dreams and that one actually um, is linking to the other. Um, but I did a little bit of research on it. I, I looked up some information from Albert Einstein and the fabric of time. And I'm here to tell you, um, I think this is what he's talking about. Now, I wasn't going to share this information until I heard a commercial on television this morning while I was standing in front of my husband. Um, we were, I was getting my tennis shoes on because we were um, doing our last final full packing day here at the house for uh, the closings within the next couple of days. And I was just talking to him, putting on my tennis shoes. And, um, and this commercial came on and I couldn't believe it when I heard it. And I, I want to play it for you. If you hang on just a second, I just want you to listen to it. It's very quick. It's like 15 seconds. I just want you to hear it. Don't freak out, but I am from the future. Seven days in the future to be exact. And that car you put on hold at CarMax.com is still being held for you free of charge. In answer to all your other questions, yes, no, and that is still illegal. Okay, guys. So the, the CarMax commercial that is airing in this area and this is a brand new one I have never heard it before um, is talking about um, coming back from the future um, I don't know if you caught that but I'm gonna I'm gonna try playing it one more time listen up to it don't freak out but I am from the future seven days in the future to be exact and that car you put on hold at carmax.com is still being held for you free of charge so guys um, the Lord gave me the dream about my daughter. I didn't know what to do with it. I asked him about it, and he gave me another dream about three days later. And it was the woman turning over the book. And the book, in the title of the book, had time travel or time traveling. And um, and I had mentioned this to my husband, and I said, you know, I, I, the Lord has just got me. He's got me going in this particular direction. He wanted me to focus on time. He's now telling me what he wants me to understand about time. And um, and he said, well, you know, just go ahead and, and get in and do your studies when you can. And so um, and so I still hadn't I, I had not made up my mind. I, as a matter of fact, I, I I hadn't even thought about even sharing this in a video until I heard that commercial this morning. And I knew what the Lord he he's that's a second confirmation for me. Um, for him to say you were on the right track and um, and this is information that I would like for you to get out and so I'm going to go ahead and share with you what I have which is not much um, because I've just not had time to dig into it um, but I feel that it's very important for me to go ahead and get it out and um, and so that's what I'm doing and that's the reason why this video is coming out right now okay um, you know when the Lord asks you to do something and he impresses upon you to do something or he gives you information, even if you don't understand it and you have this confirmation, it has to be shared because it's 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 supposed to be 
um, gotten out at that time. And so um, even though this is not the most ideal time for me to be making a video, um, for me to be able to sit down and dig into these studies, um, I did take some time last night to dig into it, and then I heard this commercial this morning, and I knew, I knew right then and there, I had to sit down this evening and make a video. And so um, let me read to you some of the information that I did find in regards to Albert Einstein and the fabric of time. Now, the links that I have that I would like to share with you, I'll go ahead and link into this comment, uh, into the, the video um, area because you guys can go ahead and start digging into this a little bit deeper than I've been able to. Um, but I want to read to you something that's really, that's really interesting. Um, surprising as it may be to most non-scientists, and even to some scientists. Albert Einstein concluded in his later years that the past, present, and future all exist simultaneously. In 1952, in his book, Relativity, in discussing Minowski's space world interpretation of his theory of relativity, Einstein writes, since there exists in this four-dimensional structure, he calls it space-time, no longer any sections which represent now objectively. The concepts of happening and becoming are indeed not completely suspended, but yet complicated. It appears, therefore, the more nat it it appears, therefore, more natural to think of physical reality as four-dimensional existence instead of the evolution of a three-dimensional existence. And so what he's talking about in this particular um, article, he is saying that there is no true division between the past and the future, rather, there is a single existence, meaning that the past, present, and future all exist simultaneously. Now, when I had that dream about my daughter and I was looking at her, we were in the same space, but we were not on the same time. So, in that dream, I understood that the past, the present, and the future was the time that I was was the time that I was thinking about. Um, we were not on the same time, and so um, I know that sounds real weird right now because she's my daughter and she is in the same time as me. But if it is different times, um, then how is that to come to be? When I went and looked at some of the videos in regards to understanding space and time for dummies, you know, YouTube videos, short understanding what the relativity is, what does it, what was this theory, and what what does it mean for um, past, present, and future to all exist at the same time. Well, it's almost like it's different threads of um, like, like a rope will have many different threads and it's all twisted, you know, to make a rope um, or embroidery, embroidery thread. You, you, you have several different threads that you pull out and, you know, some stitching will require just a single thread. Some will require two. Some will require more if it's a thicker stitch that you need to do. And it, but yet, but yet when you open it, before you pull out all of those threads, it's, it's one long thread. And so it's like the past, the present, and the future, they're, they're all, they're all intertwined on, on that rope or that thread. They're, they're all on the, 
they're all on the same path somehow. You know, my mind went when I was trying to, and I still, guys, listen, I, my mind still has not grasped it. I, I'm not real sure exactly what it's trying to say and what he's trying to point to. But I have a feeling he's trying to tell us that we're either going to be in different time times at some point. Um, we know when we go to the island, um, we know and understood that we're, we're more than likely going to be outside of time, meaning um, the land of no time, or is it a land of different time? Um, I, I, I'm not real sure. But when I was looking at some of these videos, trying just to grasp and understand how time could be so different, it had something to do with slowing down and speeding up. It had something to do with both of those, where time could be slowed down and that time could be speeded up. And so therefore, the difference in times at that at that particular point. But now, when it comes to like the, the, the past, the present, and the future, then we're talking about something much, much bigger, much, much expansive, right? All right. I went to the Bible. I went and looked up the scratch. I, I, I Googled scriptures dealing with time travel or dealing with time, dealing with differences in time. And so when I looked up a couple of them, these are some of the um, scriptures that I wanted to look up. Um, remember when the sun stood still in Joshua, in Joshua 10, verses 12 through 14. Remember, they're in battle. And, um, and he asked the Lord, please extend the day, the daylight, because we need to complete the battle. And that's exactly what happened. God stopped the sun. Um, remember there's something in the Bible where the sun, the shadow moved on the steps, moved backwards on the steps. We remember there's something about that. I've not looked that up yet, but I recall, um, I recall hearing that in a study one time. And then we know that the Lord is going to shorten time. We know that, um, in Revelation, it talks of if he didn't shorten the time, then, that no, no flesh, no man could could withstand it. No man would live. There would be nothing left. You know, so he was going to be shortening the time. And so we know that time can be expanded, stopped, or shortened. It could be, it can be, it can happen um, either way. And so we know that the Lord God can control all things. And, um, and so I knew about that. And so I, I still continued looking up some things. And I thought, well, um, let me see. Um, when we were looking up time, um, we know about the days like a thousand years and a thousand years like a day. And we know, uh, I found something else in Psalm 90. In Psalm 90, it says, um, and I don't think this is the New King James Version. I'm not sure what version this is. For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past or as a watch in the night. And so, so if a day is like a thousand years, and he's saying for a thousand years in your sight, meaning our sight, are but are but as yesterday. So that's a day. So we understand it's a day. But it also says, or as a watch in the night. And so I'm like, hmm, because a watch is only, aren't, there's four watches in the night, right? And so is that, that's, that's one, one watch. I don't know. So it could be this or it could be that. And then I was looking for, um, uh, I was looking through, um, um, here's, here's another one. This one got me here. Therefore do not be, this is second Timothy one, uh, verses eight and nine. Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, 
but share in the sufferings of the gospel by the power of God who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. Before the ages began. And so we know we know that on Enoch's calendar, these this every 30 days um, could also be constituted as an age. Um, and so these are before before all of that began, before the stars got their names, before all of that, before the ages began. Because remember, the sun and the moon and the stars were put up so that days and weeks and seasons could be identified. So before the ages began, I'm like, wow. And so that tells you then that, that um, remember we talked about Job 38 and Job 38 keeps popping up all the time too. Job 38 is talking about, um, where the Lord, where the Lord is going to Job and he's asking him all of these questions. And remember Job 38, let's see, uh, four, four, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it, the measuring line? To what were its foundations fastened? Or who laid its cornerstones when the morning stars sang together? And the sons of God shouted for joy. So the morning stars and the sons of God were all, they were there. They were already there. They were already there. Um, way back when, when things were being created, they were already there. And remember, we, we understood who the sons of God were. We understood who the 144 were because in Revelation 14, it talks about those are the ones who did not defile themselves with the daughters of men. They were the virgins. They were the virgins. Okay, the 144. And so, um, and so, the other part of it, too, is remember, I was in prayer with the Lord. I had just had communion with the Lord, and the Lord told me. He said I was there. I was at the crucifixion. He told me I was there. He told me I was there. Now, I caught a lot of flack for sharing that. I caught a lot of flack for sharing that. But there's a lot of others who knew they were there as well. Guys, there is something to this. And I don't know what it is. I don't know I don't know exactly what he's trying to show me right now, but it's got something to do with time and it's got something to do with the past, the present and the future and people being on different times. Now, my daughter is on in, in my time right now. It, in my mere mortal mind, when I'm talking about time, I'm telling you that this is what I see with my eyes and what I know with my mind because my body brought her forth into this world. She's in this time right? Present time in my understanding of present time at this, at this point. Okay. So what's going to happen that either something is going to slow down or speed up to where it's going, it's going to be different. We're not going to be on the same time, but I'm going to be able to see her we were in the same space. Is it a difference to where they will not be able to see us? Is that what he's trying to say? But we're still going to be able to communicate according to my understanding in the dream. Some type of message or note can be, can be written. And the book now, when I did some information, when I did some information, 
When I did some research and digging into Albert Einstein and the fabric of time and the issue of time travel, um, in one of the videos it explained to me that each slice of time is like a book that opens up and it's like each page. So there's there's something with that in regards to slices of time, threads, different threads in the embroidery thread or in the rope, different pieces that are twisted together. Um, I, I don't know. See, this is why I didn't want to make this video because I don't know enough about it to be able to convey it to you. But I'm putting it out there because even though that I don't know anything about it, somebody's going to need this information for confirmation. And we're going to need, need this information to start digging into where the Lord is pointing us to. He's pointing us to time travel. And so I started thinking, is the, you know, when, um, you know, when you trans relocate, when you, in the spirit, you're able to move from one place to another, just, you know, instantly. Is that time travel? Is the catching away of the first fruits? Not the big rapture where, you know, everyone's going to be going up. I mean, uh, you know, the main bulk of the wheat uh, harvest that we understand. But is, is, or is it all time travel? And how does this fit into the, how does this fit into the, um, um, how does this fit into the harvest? You know, the Lord reminded me of that dream, and I shared it um, early on when I first started my channel. Um, he reminded me of the dream where my, I was at my sister's house and um, this, this man um, said immediately, it's, it's, we have to go. And, you know, and the tone in his voice, the way he said it, it, it you know, instilled fear into me. And I knew, and I, I followed him into a closet. I don't know if you all um, remember that video. But I had followed him into a closet, and I re and I remembered as soon as I got into the closet, I was thinking, oh no, my sister didn't get in here. But the the uh, the person who was with me, who I think was my guardian angel, he didn't speak to me. I just I understood in thought that she was going to be fine. Um, she was just going to be living her life differently now. And he opened up a portal um, for me to look through, and I saw in that portal things. Um, like she was like she was in a whirlwind and things were just going going around her and it was it was like her she saw her life um playing out in front of her and i remember looking and saying to myself um oh i remember that you know in her life and you know i'd look at something else and say oh i had no idea about that i don't i don't know anything about that um and so um and so but in that closet it was like i was in a um a protected place. I was in a, you know, it was like, you know, someone with a wall just unzipped it and I was able to walk through and it zipped right back up behind me. So I was still in the same place, um, but they couldn't see me, you know. And so, you know, is that, is that, is that, is, how is this all connecting? There's, there's something connecting to it all because, um, because the Lord reminded me of that dream that I had back in 2012, 13, uh, something like that with my sister. And so I, I'm still trying to figure it all out. But um, but it's very interesting. It's truly, truly very interesting. Um, so I'm going to read to you a little bit more about what he says here about the um, fabric of time. So Einstein's belief in an undivided, solid reality was clear to him, so much so that he completely rejected the separation we experience 
as the moment of now. He believed there is no true division between the past and the future. There is rather a single existence. His most descriptive testimony to this faith came when his lifelong friend Besso died. Einstein wrote a letter to the Besso family saying that al although Besso had preceded him in death, it was of no consequence. For us, physicists believe the separation between the past, present, and future is only an illusion, although a convincing one. And so, you know, my mind started thinking about some things. When I lived in the eastern side of the state of North Carolina, when I went on vacation, I would go up to um, Colonial Williamsburg. And I would go through, you know, the, the colonial site that they had. And then I would take the kids to, you know, Bush Gardens, Water Country, you know, and all that stuff up in there. Well, I didn't, they didn't have Water Country back then. Um, I took them to Bush Gardens. And so, you know, we had, we swam in pools and we, you know, we did all the colonial stuff and, you know, we had a good time. But there was a bunch of battlefields up there, um, historical sites where they had a bunch of um, battles, uh, Civil War, um, you know, uh, battles and um and when you talk to a lot of the people that um that do the um do the work in that area that you know a lot of them will tell you that um people have seen you know figures walking around still in um you know civil war um you know um clothing and and you know like they like they've been fighting in a war and so you know they they may be sit they may be on the battlefield in this time just going as a tourist you know a history buff or some you know someone is interested in the history of the area and um you know and and actually see someone pass by for just fragments of a second and say oh my goodness and then it be gone you know, and so my mind went to that when I was reading this information because I was like, well, um, is that what they're talking about? Is everything happening all at one time, just in different um, times, fragments, slices of time? Slices of time is the is the is the language that someone said in one of those videos that I understood a little bit easier. Um, could that tourist be standing in 2017, and could that fighter still be be actually be fighting? Um, and the veil be thin enough to see through for a snippet of a second. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. But it's interesting to think about. It's interesting to think about. So, um, so it wasn't just Einstein that had this theory. This theory of um, past, present, and future all being at the same time was also confirmed by two other um, scientists. Um, one being um, Feynman. What's his first name? Richard Feynman, and then the other one being, um, let me see what his name is, Stephen Hawking. And so, um, so I'm familiar a little bit with the Hawking name because I have seen some of the Big Bang Theory, you know, and, and, uh, and they have, uh, they talk about him um, as a scientist. But both of those scientists have actually um, verified and confirmed that they, they feel like this theory that he has said um, is accurate. And, um, and so I did a little bit more studying um, and different kind of um, um, articles and videos that I could find in regards to um, Albert Einstein. But I found one more, and this one's online, and I want to read this one to you because the information that I found in it um, is pretty pretty fascinating. The um, the site that I have um, the site that I have found is called the Hope of Israel, and its its title is Time Travel in the Bible. And so there's a lot of different 
um, scripture and that type of thing in here that um, that they've posted but there's something that I would like to read to you here uh, let me see do I have it okay so this is talking about Einstein's theory Einstein's theory says that if you want to slow time down, essentially to time travel, you need to move fast, very fast. Imagine setting off on a mission from Earth in the year 2000, for example. You are scheduled to be away until 2032, but will be traveling at 95% the speed of light, around 285,000 kilometers a second. The amazing thing is that on your return your watch would tell you that it is 2010 despite it being 2032 on earth and you would be 22 years younger than anyone you left behind. That is time dilation and it works at slower speeds too albeit to a much less profound degree. Of course, Einstein's theory of time travel has never been tried since mankind has never been able to travel at the speed of 285,000 kilometers in a second. In fact, the fastest that we have traveled is about 10 kilometers in one second by spaceship while escaping the Earth's atmosphere. The fastest land vehicle can only travel about one kilometer in one second. Unless our physical body is protected from the pressure of the extremely high speed of 285,000 kilometers, it would most likely crush our fragile bodies. Let me read this part to you one more time. In fact, the fastest that we have traveled is about 10 kilometers in one second. So when I read that, when I read that, I near about fell off my chair. 10 to 1. 10 to 1. 10 kilometers to one second. Is that what the Lord was trying to show us? 10 to 1. I couldn't believe it. Now, would I have found that any other way had the Lord not told me about time, gave me the dream, gave me the book title, and I started looking up? I had a thought in my mind, didn't Einstein talk about this kind of stuff? And I went in and started looking up, and it, through those articles, that's where I ran across this. Guys, there's something about it. He's trying to show us something. Um, and my mere mind is not grasping at all. I have to sit and immerse myself in this information so that I can find out what it is he's trying to tell us. Um, seek the Lord on it. I, mean, I, I implore you, seek the Lord on it. I wasn't going to share it. But he gave me the second dream, and I knew at that point I needed to start digging deeper into it, and I did. And I found this information, and I still wasn't going to share the information. And the Lord gave me, he put on that television commercial this morning. So guys, he's, he's definitely pointing us into this direction. What it is exactly he's trying to show us. I don't know. Is it like the other things where he's given us a little hint and where, you know, he's he's leading us along the way, you know, is is that what he's trying to do? Um, you know, or 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 what? I you know, I'm not sure. More than likely that is what it is, but um we're having this is where we're going. We're going into time travel and we're going into about being on different times and we're going into how we're able to communicate somehow, some way. Now, there was something that um, was on one of these articles that I thought was interesting because he has been leading a lot of people to the matrix. Remember, um, 
And the, the, the comment that was on this was in regards to the matrix. And it was, you have the sight now, Neo. You are looking at the world without time. And I'm like, okay, so are we having to grasp, grasp something so that we understand? Um, are we getting ready to go into that? Are we, are we going to be staying in that? Is that how the world is going now to, 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 to go into? You know, I, you know, I don't know. Is he just telling us that we're going to the island and we're going to be outside of time? I mean, is that what he's trying to tell us? You know, I, I'm not sure, guys, but I think it's got something more to do. I think it's, I think it's something more than that, um, somehow, some way. So, um, so guys, I'm going to give you the information that I have. I'm going to, I'm going to provide it for you. I'm going to give you the links that I have found. Please go and, and research this yourself. Please go to the Lord in prayer about it. Um, I don't fully understand it. But um, but we're we're getting ready to embark on some pretty um, some pretty interesting stuff. Um, this is not anything that I have ever dabbled into at all. Um, but um, but if there's any way that I can understand it in a simplistic term, I will try and share it with you as simplistically as I can as well. Um, so guys, I just want to say thank you for coming back to this video. I apologize. Um, it's been a while. I am going to be out of pocket for a while. And so I just need to, um, I need to let you all know that we're going to be moving. I'm not sure if the, um, if the internet is going to be connected in a timely manner or how that's all going to work. Um, I know several of you have been submitting um, comments to me. Richard, I have seen your um the, my email run coming in, and I see that you have made a lot of comments. Um, I have not had a chance to look at them yet, so please bear with me while I'm working um, through what I have going on here, um, and I will get to them as soon as I possibly can. So guys, we're on the verge of something pretty exciting. Oh, and one more thing. Um, for those of you who remember the vision that I had, um, that um, being called into service, I would not be in my new home very long before um, we would be called into service. I think it was I would not I I would not be able to even have the chance to enjoy it uh, before being called into service. So um, so heads up on that. I mean I'm closing on this house tomorrow. I'm closing on the next house um, the following day. How long that is, that time period that he's speaking of, I'm not sure. Um, you know, being called into service, what does that mean exactly? I'm not sure. Um, but the Lord is leading us into time, and he's leading us into time travel and being in different times um, somehow and communication in that. So, guys, I just wanted to share with you what I have. I know the Lord wanted it to get out there. I apologize. I don't have a lot of answers for you right now, um, but it is pretty exciting to hear about. So I would love to hear if any of you all have some information in regards to if this is where the Lord is leading you as well. Um, and if you've done any studies on this or if you just, you know, dabble with this kind of stuff as a hobby or um, or if you work in it, I, I would love to know. Um, that would be so fascinating to be able to hear the ins and the outs and the nuts and the bolts of everything. So, guys, um, thank you. God bless you. Thank you for your prayers. I appreciate it so very much. Last video here at the house. Next one will be at the new place. Guys, I love you. Take care. Stay under swing.